Universe Books. The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. By Dr. Joseph Murphy, Ph.D., 1963. This is an audiovisual project, derived from the original classic book. Produced by Universe Books Channel. All rights reserved. Chapter 19, How to Use Your Subconscious Mind to Remove Fear. One of my students was invited to speak at the annual banquet of his professional association. He told me he was panic-stricken at the thought of speaking before a thousand people, many of whom were influential in his field. He overcame his fear this way, for several nights he sat calmly in an armchair for about five minutes. He said to himself slowly, quietly, and positively, I am going to master this fear. I am overcoming it now. I speak with poise and confidence. I am relaxed and at ease. In this way, he set into operation a definite law of mind. When the time came, he overcame his fear and gave a very successful speech. The subconscious mind is amenable to suggestion. It is controlled by suggestion. When you still your mind and relax, the thoughts of your conscious mind sink into the subconscious. The process is similar to osmosis, in which fluids separated by a porous membrane intermingle. As these positive seeds, or thoughts, sink into the subconscious area, they grow after their kind, and you become poised, serene, and calm. People's Greatest Enemy It has been said that people's greatest enemy is fear. Fear is behind failure, sickness, and poor human relations. Millions of people are afraid of the past, the future, old age, insanity, and death. But fear is a thought in your mind. This means that you are afraid of your own thoughts. A small child can be paralyzed with fear when a playmate says there is a monster under the bed who will grab him in the night. But when the parent turns on the light and shows there is no monster, he is freed from fear. The fear in the mind of the child was every bit as real as if there were really a monster there. He was healed of a false thought in his mind. The thing he feared did not exist. In the same way, most of your fears have no reality. They are merely a conglomeration of sinister shadows, and shadows have no reality. Do the thing your fear. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the great 19th century philosopher and poet, said, Do the thing you are afraid to do, and the death of fear is certain. There was a time when I was filled with unutterable fear at the thought of standing before an audience and speaking. If I had given way to this fear, terrible as it was, I am sure you would not now be reading this book. I would never have been able to share with others what I have learned about the workings of the subconscious mind. The way I overcame this fear was to follow Emerson's advice. Quaking inside, I went before audiences and spoke. Gradually I became less fearful, until at last I was comfortable enough to enjoy what I was doing. I even grew to look forward to speaking engagements. I did the thing I was afraid to do, and the death of fear was certain. When you affirm positively that you are going to master your fears, and you come to a definite decision in your conscious mind, you release the power of the subconscious, which flows in response to the nature of your thought. Banishing Stage Fright In an earlier chapter, I described the case of Janet R., a young opera singer whose career had been sidetracked by a terrible case of stage fright. When she was invited to audition for a major role in an opera production, she realized that this might well be her last chance at success. Yet her stage fright was as powerful as ever. Unless she managed to deal with it, she knew she would fail once again. The way she overcame her fear was to isolate herself in a room and do her best to relax both her body and mind. To counteract the fear suggestion that dominated her subconscious mind, she repeated slowly, quietly, and with feeling the words I sing beautifully. I am poised, serene, confident, and calm. She repeated these words from five to ten times at each sitting. By the end of one week she felt poised and confident. When the time came, she gave an outstanding audition. If you adapt this procedure to your situation and carry it out sincerely and confidently, the death of fear is certain. Fear of Filur I often get visits from students at a nearby university. One complaint many of them share is what we can call suggestive amnesia during examinations. They all tell me the same thing, I know the material cold before the exam, and I remember all the answers after the exam. But when I'm in the classroom staring down at a blank exam booklet, my mind goes totally blank. A great many of us have had similar experiences. 
The explanation lies in one of the major laws of the subconscious mind. The idea that realizes itself is the one to which we give the most concentrated attention. In talking with these students, I find that they are most attentive to the idea of failure. As a result, it is failure that the subconscious mind brings into reality. The fear of failure itself creates the experience of failure, by way of a temporary amnesia. A medical student named Sheila A. was one of the most brilliant students in her class. Yet when she faced a written or oral examination, she found herself going blank at even simple questions. I explained the reason to her. She had been worrying and brooding over the chances of failure for several days before the exam. These negative thoughts became charged with fear. Thoughts enveloped in the powerful emotion of fear are realized in the subconscious mind. In other words, this young student was requesting her subconscious mind to see to it that she failed, and that is exactly what it did. On the day of the examination she found herself stricken with suggestive amnesia. How she overcame her fear. As Sheila studied the working of her subconscious mind, she learned that it is the storehouse of memory. It had a perfect record of everything she had heard and read during her medical training. Moreover, she learned that the subconscious mind is responsive and reciprocal. The way to be in deep rapport with it is to be relaxed, peaceful, and confident. Every night and morning, she began to imagine her parents congratulating her on her wonderful record. She would hold an imaginary letter from them in her hand. As she began to contemplate this happy result, she called forth a corresponding or reciprocal response or reaction in herself. Under this consistent stimulation, the all-wise and omnipotent power of the subconscious took over. It dictated and directed her conscious mind accordingly. She imagined the end, thereby willing the means to the realization of the end. After following this procedure, she had no trouble passing her subsequent exams. The subjective wisdom of her subconscious mind took over and compelled her to give an excellent account of herself. Fear of water When I was about 10 years old, I accidentally fell into a swimming pool. I had never learned to swim. I flailed my arms, but it did no good. I felt myself sinking. I can still remember the terror as the dark water surrounded me. I tried to gasp for air, but my mouth filled with water. At the last moment, another boy noticed my plight. He jumped in and pulled me out. This experience sank into my subconscious mind. The result was that for years I feared the water. Then one day I mentioned this irrational fear of mine to a wise elderly psychologist. Go down to the swimming pool, he told me. Look at the water. It is simply a chemical compound, made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one of oxygen. It has no will, no awareness. But you have both. I nodded, wondering where this was leading. Once you understand that the water is essentially passive, he continued, say out loud in a strong voice, I am going to master you. By the powers of mind, I will dominate you. Then go into the water. Take swimming lessons. Use your inner powers to overcome the water. I did as I was told. Once I assumed a new attitude of mind, the omnipotent power of the subconscious responded, giving me strength, faith, and confidence. It enabled me to overcome my fear, and I mastered the water. Today I swim every morning for both health and pleasure. Do not permit water to master you. Remember, you are the master of the water. Master technique for overcoming any particular fear. Here is a technique for overcoming fear that I have taught from the lecture platform to thousands of people. It works like a charm. Try it. Suppose you are afraid of swimming. Begin now to sit still for 5 or 10 minutes 3 or 4 times a day. Put yourself into a state of deep relaxation. Now imagine you are swimming. Subjectively, you are swimming. Mentally you have projected yourself into the water. You feel the brisk coolness of the water and the movement of your arms and legs. It is all real, vivid, and a joyous activity of the mind. This is not idle daydreaming. You understand that what you are experiencing in your imagination will be developed in your subconscious mind then you will be compelled to express the image and likeness of the picture you impressed on your deeper mind. When you next attempt to swim, it is the joy that will surface. This is the law of the subconscious. You can apply the same technique to other fears. If you are afraid of high places, 
imagine you are taking a stroll in the mountains. Feel the reality of it all. Enjoy the pure air, the alpine flowers, the thrilling scenery. Know that as you continue to do this mentally, you will come to do it physically with ease and comfort. He blessed the elevator. Jonathan M. is an executive with a large corporation. For many years he was terrified to ride in an elevator. He would walk up seven flights of stairs to his office every morning to avoid the elevator ride. When he had to meet with people from other companies whose offices were on high floors, he always found some excuse to meet them at his own office or at a restaurant. Business trips out of town were torture for him. He had to call ahead, to make sure his hotel room was on a low floor and that he would be able to use the stairs. This fear was the product of his subconscious mind, perhaps in response to some experience that he had long since forgotten on a conscious level. Once he learned this, he set about to change it. He began to bless the elevator every night and several times a day. In a calm, confident mood, he repeated to himself, the elevator in our building is a wonderful idea. It came out of the universal mind. It is a boon and a blessing to all our employees. It gives wonderful service. It operates in divine order. I ride in it in peace and joy. I remain silent now while the currents of life, love and understanding flow through the patterns of my thought. In my imagination I am now in the elevator, and I step out into my office. The elevator is full of our employees. I talk to them, and they are friendly, joyous and free. It is a wonderful experience of freedom, faith, and confidence. I give thanks. He continued this prayer for ten days. On the eleventh day, he walked into the elevator with other members of his company and felt completely free. Normal and Abnormal Fear A newborn baby has only two basic fears, the fear of falling and the fear of sudden loud noises. These are perfectly normal. They serve as a sort of alarm system given you by nature as a means of self-preservation. Normal fear is good. You hear an automobile coming down the road toward you and you step aside to survive. The momentary fear of being run over is overcome by your action. All other fears are abnormal. They were caused by particular experiences or were passed along to you by parents, relatives, teachers and others who influenced your early years. Abnormal fear. Abnormal fear takes hold when people let their imagination run riot. I knew a woman who was invited to go on a trip around the world by plane. She began to cut out of the newspapers all reports of airplane catastrophes. She even ordered a videotape of the world's worst airplane crashes. She imagined herself going down in the ocean and drowning. This is abnormal fear. Had she persisted in this, there is a strong chance that she would have attracted to herself what she feared most. Another example of someone who suffered from abnormal fear is a businessman in New York who was very successful and prosperous. He created his own private mental motion picture in which his company was forced into bankruptcy and he lost everything. The more he ran this mental movie of failure, the more he sank into a deep depression. He refused to stop this morbid imagery. He kept telling his wife, this can't last, the boom will end any day now, it's all hopeless, we're going to go broke. His wife later told me that in the end he did go bankrupt. All the things he imagined and feared came to pass. The things he feared did not exist, but he brought them to pass by constantly fearing, believing, and expecting financial disaster. As Jobs said, the thing I feared has come upon me. The world is full of people who are afraid that something terrible will happen to their children or that some dread catastrophe will befall them. When they read about an epidemic of some rare disease, they live in fear that they will catch it. Some imagine they have the disease already. All this is abnormal fear. The answer to abnormal fear. If you find yourself beset with an abnormal fear, you must strive to move mentally to the opposite. If you remain at the extreme of fear, you will suffer stagnation plus mental and physical deterioration. When fear arises, one of the basic laws of the subconscious mind immediately brings with it a desire for something opposite to the thing feared. Place your attention on the thing immediately desired. Get absorbed and engrossed in your desire. Know that the subjective always overturns the objective. This attitude will give you confidence and lift your spirits. The infinite power of your subconscious mind is moving on your behalf. It cannot fail. Therefore, peace and assurance are yours. Examine your fears. 
The head of sales for a major multinational corporation confided that when he first began working as a salesperson, he had to walk around a block five or six times before he could get up the nerve to call on a customer. His supervisor was both very experienced and very perceptive. One day she said to him, don't be afraid of the monster hiding behind the door. There is no monster. You are the victim of a false belief. The supervisor went on to tell him that whenever she felt the first stirrings of a fear, she stood up to it. She stared it in the face, looking it straight in the eye. When she did that, she always found that her fear faded and shrank into insignificance. He landed in the jungle. A former the United States Army chaplain named John N. told me that during World War II, the plane he was in was hit and damaged by anti-aircraft fire. He had to bail out over the jungle-clad mountains of New Guinea. Of course he was frightened, but he knew that fear came in two varieties, normal and abnormal. The abnormal kind, which was trying to take control of him, was a close relative of panic. He decided to do something about his fear immediately. He began to talk to himself, saying, John, you can't surrender to your fear. Your fear is a desire for safety and security, and a way out. He stood in the center of a small clearing and calmed his breathing. He pushed away the first symptoms of panic. As soon as he felt more relaxed, he began to claim, infinite intelligence, which guides the planets in their courses, is now leading and guiding me out of this jungle to safety. He kept saying this out loud to himself for ten minutes or more. Suddenly, John told me, I felt something start to stir inside me. It was a mood of confidence and faith. I was drawn to one side of the clearing. There I found the faint trace of a path, and I began to walk. Two days later, I miraculously came upon a small village where the people were friendly. They fed me, then took me to the edge of the jungle, where a rescue plane picked me up. John's changed mental attitude saved him. His confidence and trust in the subjective wisdom and power within him gave him the solution to his problem. He added, if I had started to bemoan my fate and indulge my fears, the monster fear would have conquered me. I probably would have died of fear and starvation. He dismissed himself. Raphael S. was an executive in a major foundation. He admitted to me that for three years he had been terrified he would lose his position. He was always imagining failure. He kept expecting his subordinates to be promoted over his head. The thing he feared did not exist, save as a morbid anxious thought in his own mind. His vivid imagination dramatized the loss of his job until he became increasingly nervous and inefficient. Finally he was asked to resign. In reality, Raphael dismissed himself his constant negative imagery, the flood of fear suggestions he sent to his subconscious mind, caused the subconscious mind to respond and react accordingly. It led him to make mistakes and foolish decisions. These in turn created his failure. He might never have been fired if he had immediately moved to the opposite in his mind. They plotted against him. During a world lecture tour, I had a two-hour conversation with a prominent government official in one of the countries I visited. I found that this man had a deep sense of inner peace and serenity. He said that although he is constantly showered with abuse by newspapers that support the opposition party, he never allows it to disturb him. His practice is to sit still for 15 minutes in the morning and realize that in the center of himself is a deep, still ocean of peace. Meditating in this way, he generates tremendous power, which overcomes all manner of difficulties and fears. A few months earlier, he had received a midnight call from a panicky colleague. According to his co-worker, a group of people were plotting against him. They intended to overthrow his administration by force, with help from dissident elements of the country's armed forces. In reply, the official told his colleague, I am going to sleep now in perfect peace. We can discuss this tomorrow at 10 a.m. As he explained to me, I know that no negative thought can ever manifest itself unless I emotionalize the thought and accept it mentally. I refuse to entertain their suggestion of fear. Therefore, no harm can come to me unless I allow it. Notice how calm he was, how cool, how serene. He did not get overwrought and start tearing his hair or wringing his hands. At his center he found the still water, an inner peace, and there was a great calm. Deliver yourself from all your fears. In the Bible there is a perfect formula for casting out fear, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, 
and delivered me from all my fears. Psalm 34, verse 4. Lord is an ancient word meaning law, the power of your subconscious mind. Learn the wonders of your subconscious. Understand how it works and functions. Master the techniques given to you in this chapter. Put them into practice now, today. Your subconscious will respond, and you will be free of all fears. I sought the Lord, and He heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Step this way to freedom from fear. Do the thing you are afraid to do, and the death of fear is certain. If you say to yourself with perfect confidence and faith, I am going to master this fear, you will. Fear is a negative thought in your mind. Supplant it with a constructive thought. Fear has killed millions. Confidence is greater than fear. Nothing is more powerful than faith in God and the good. Fear is person's greatest enemy. It is behind failure, sickness, and bad human relations. Love casts out fear. Love is an emotional attachment to the good things of life. Fall in love with honesty, integrity, justice, goodwill, and success. Live in the joyous expectancy of the best, and invariably the best will come to you. Counteract fear suggestions with the opposite, such as, I do it good, I am poised, serene, and calm. It will pay fabulous dividends. Fear is behind the suggestive amnesia that strikes during examinations. You can overcome this by affirming frequently, I have a perfect memory for everything I need to know. Imagine a friend congratulating you on your brilliant success on the exam. Persevere and you will win. If you are afraid to cross water, swim. In your imagination swim freely, joyously. Project yourself into the water mentally. Feel the chill and thrill of swimming across the pool. Make it vivid. As you do this subjectively, you will be compelled to go into the water and conquer it. This is the law of your mind. If you are afraid of closed places, such as elevators, mentally ride in an elevator while sincerely blessing all its parts and functions. You will be amazed how quickly the fear will be dissipated. You were born with only two fears, the fear of falling and the fear of noise. All your other fears were acquired. Get rid of them. Normal fear is good. Abnormal fear is very bad and destructive. To constantly indulge in fear thoughts results in abnormal fear, obsessions, and complexes. To fear something persistently causes a sense of panic and terror. You can overcome abnormal fear when you know the power of your subconscious mind can change conditions and bring to pass the cherished desires of your heart. Give your immediate attention and devotion to your desire, which is the opposite of your fear. This is the love that casts out fear. If you are afraid of failure, give attention to success. If you are afraid of sickness, dwell on perfect health. If you are afraid of an accident, dwell on the guidance and protection of God. If you are afraid of death, dwell on eternal life. God is life, and that is your life now. The great law of substitution is the answer to fear. Whatever you fear has its solution in the form of your desire. If you are sick, you desire health. If you are in the prison of fear, you desire freedom. Expect the good. Mentally concentrate on the good, and know that your subconscious mind answers you always. It never fails. The things you fear do not really exist except as thoughts in your mind. Thoughts are creative. This is why Job said, the thing I feared has come upon me. Think good and good follows. Look at your fears, hold them up to the light of reason. Learn to laugh at your fears. That is the best medicine. Nothing can disturb you but your own thought. The suggestions, statements, or threats of other persons have no power. The power is within you, and when your thoughts are focused on that which is good, then God's power is with your thoughts of good. There is only one creative power, and it moves as harmony. There are no divisions of quarrels in it. Its source is love. This is why God's power is with your thoughts of good. Well, here we finished this chapter of the book. Continue to listen in the next chapter. If you liked this video, if it brought a valuable information to you, you can help us clicking the like button, it is a positive sign for YouTube to suggest this audiobook to other people, and help the channel's growth. If you think that this video made your reading easier, if you think that it made your reading faster and more practical, if you think that we should launch more like this, 
write a comment here, we would like to know your opinion, it is very important for us. Remember to subscribe, and you will be informed when we launch new videos. Thank you for watching, see you in next chapter. Be always welcome. Production, Universe Books Copyright 2016